हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ दैट इज द नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड बायोलॉजी साइंस ओके सो बिफोर वी बिगेन आई वुड लाइक टू clear certain doubts or certain you know concepts regarding biology now if i talk about biology biology specifically means the study of living organisms because bio in biology stands for life so now what we are going to learn in this a study of living organisms now what what are living organisms the living organisms are nothing but plants and animals so if i talk about plants and animals you all might have observed or you will observe that in plants or in animals there are certain systems there are certain organ systems there are certain organs okay supposingly we take us hand now our hand is made up of bones from inside along with the flesh and skin on the outer side now if i take a look of skin okay now skin itself is a organ in fact it is the largest organ in the human body so now what is the skin made up of of course it will be made up of seven layers or maybe many layers which you all have been learnt in like previous standards again what are this layer made is made up of so this layers may be made up of something which is combined together and that something is known as tissue okay so a tissue various tissue stacked upon each other in a various like in various ways makes up a organ now this tissue okay further has minute compartment like structures which are known as cells and since there is the cell is the tiniest part of any living being it is known as the unit of life now what does a cell mean now why fundamental just because those cells are living and they are important for us to survive to grow to regenerate and every other aspects so now why fundamental because the word itself says it is important so if i talk about something now we will just you know maybe go back into the history and this history is very important so if i talk about something that is the cell we will come back the very first thing what we will do is come back on the discovery of the cell now the first cell discovery was made by robert hooke in the year 1665 Okay, he happened to see a bark of tree inside a magnifying glass, which was kind of a simple microscope at that time. And what he observed was the compartments which were there present on the bark. Of course, the bark is a dead organism, or maybe a dead organ of the body. so the cells were empty so first thing the first one who discovered cell was robert hook but those cells were non living since they were the cells of the bark of the tree now the second scientist who discovered the cells is levin hook okay now this levin hook did this discovery in the year 1674 okay so now this levin hook let me write the okay this discovery of levin hook was noted that the cells are living 
okay so robert hook in 1665 discovered cells but those were dead cells living hook in 1674 discovered cells which were living cells now as you all know cell has a middle portion known as nucleus now there was another robert who was robert brown he discovered nucleus present in the living cells in the year 1831 okay so after that came the purkenji now in 1839 okay so sorry purkenji found out that the cells the living cells has fluid in it and now this fluid is often known as the protoplasm or cytoplasm okay so after this the cell was invented by robert hook the cells are living that was invented by the living hook then robert brown invent or discovered maybe the nucleus purkinje discovered cytoplasm now after this there were two scientists known as sheldon and schwann they discovered the cell theory and there was another scientist known as virchow he modified the cell theory now who were the sheldon and schwann both of them were zoologist and botanist in their respective field one day they came upon to look into the cell into detail and then they formulated the cell theory which you all will learn as you all grow up but again this cell theory was modified by virtue now what is the cell theory the very first thing the cell may be living or non living okay so another thing which was present in the cell theory was cell is the basic unit of life and the third thing which you know the purkin sorry not the purkin ji the virchow who modified that cell theory was the cell arises from the pre existing cell fine so this is all you all need to know a little bit history of what is cell the fundamental unit of life now let us move on to the real part that is knowing about the cell so if i talk about before i talk about this there is a simple experiment which you all will perform in your school laboratories that is when you take a onion peel okay what you do is onion has many peels you take one of the peel you remove or you scrape the inner of the peel you mount it on the slide and you add full few drops of saffron in along with water in it now what you will see is the colored pattern of the cells so this is a quite a little bit experiment now we will move on to the structure now what are the structures of the cell now the cell has various structure right from the most primitive cell now what does primitive mean it means that very basic which was first found or first derived from the primitive cell to the modern cell or maybe the most advanced cell the cell has various structures and organs now if i talk about the cell okay basically the cell is divided into two types one is unicellular the other one is multicellular now what does unicellular means uni means one so any organism which has single cell is known as the unicellular organism 
Now, what is multicellular? Multi means many. Now, any organisms which has many cells are known as multicellular organism. Looking at us, okay, we have many cells. But if I talk about the example or any human being or any living thing what you see is by your naked eye is generally multicellular. Fine. So if I talk about the unicellular organism, the unicellular organism has only one cell and that example may be certain kind of fungi. The classic example is an amoeba. Okay, so if I talk about unicellular and multicellular organism, what I will talk about later is the shape of the cell. Okay, so shape of the cell varies from cell to cell. For example, in humans, we have different shapes of the cells. Okay, the cell may vary. It may be circular, it may be hexagon, it may be or any of weird kind. If you see the neural cells, so sorry. they appear somewhat like this. Okay, the cell has various structure. If you see various other cells, they have various structure and function depending upon the position where they are. First, we will take on to a simple organism like amoeba. How is its cell structure? Okay, so if I talk about amoeba, amoeba has no definitive shape. Okay, even if you draw an amoeba like this or an amoeba like this, or maybe any desired shape which you feel like drawing, it has no definitive shape because amoeba changes its shape with regards to the surrounding and its facilities. Okay, so then there are cells which have a particular definite shape. Okay, and these cells are example what. The example is what the neural cells which I have drawn here. Now let us move on to the cellular function. Okay, so if I talk about the cellular function, the each individual cell has been assigned certain function. Now if I talk about the unicellular cell, okay, the unicellular cell, the function of the cell has everything right from the respiration, right from the digestion, right from the excretion, everything is present in the unicellular cell, in one cell itself. But if I talk about multicellular organisms, there are various multicellular organisms wherein there is a division of labor. Now what do you understand by the word division of labor? Okay, supposingly you have a class activity in which you all all together make a project. Okay, so now the single the project has to be one, but the effort which has been put are by many of the people. Okay, so if I talk about division of labor, of course this division of labor is carried out by various other cells or various group of cells supposingly the group of cell in your eyes help you listening or oh, sorry I'm so sorry help you seeing the sight the group of cells in your ears help you to listen the group of cell in your stomach helps you to digest so similarly the multicellular cells have various division of labor and they cannot interchange the labor like the stomach cells cannot respirate they cannot intake Fine, they respirate of course at the cellular level, but then they cannot for respiration or for excretion. Okay, so but then a cell has, you know, uh, certain characteristics which is cell perform, like taking up nutrition and excretion of waste, etc. So, after this, 
we are going to look upon how or what is the cell made up of what is the structure of a cell so if i talk about cell the cell is made up of various things right from the cell wall to the cell membrane to the cytoplasm or the protoplasm to the nucleus and various other other organs are made up by the cell now if i talk about first the very first thing if i look into a cell the very first thing what i will observe is the plasma membrane okay so if i talk about plasma membrane the plasma membrane is the membrane of the cell or the membrane of the bodies and everything which is there in the cell okay so what is this plasma membrane useful for of course cell is doing its own function in that it will need some kind of energy okay it will need some kind of water it will need some kind of glucose maybe oxygen it may have some waste products it may give out carbon dioxide so everything every each and every function is carried out like the uh, it is kind of a passage in which the things enter into the cell and gets out of the cell so the first thing what can happen is exchange of gases now if we talk about exchange of gases what we usually take in is the oxygen and what we usually give out is the carbon dioxide same thing goes with the cell what cell usually takes in is the oxygen and what cells usually give out is the carbon dioxide now how does this process occur now this process occurs via a simple concept known as diffusion okay so what is diffusion if i talk about diffusion diffusion is the movement of gaseous particles or maybe you know gas gas from its higher concentration to its lower concentration supposingly if the cell supposedly this is the part of cells the cell has used many like many molecules of oxygen for its internal procedure and now a lot of carbon dioxide is present in the cell but if i talk about the surrounding area the amount of carbon dioxide is low here it is high here it is low so the carbon dioxide from the higher position will move to the lower position by the process known as diffusion now the higher position is the cell the lower position is the surrounding so the carbon dioxide will move from the cell to the surrounding at the same time okay there is low deficiency of oxygen in the cell and there is abundance of oxygen outside okay so now what will happen is when the carbon dioxide is moving from the cell of via the plasma membrane outer part of the cell at the same time the oxygen will move inside the cell okay so this is what happens so this happens via a simple process known as diffusion now if i talk about something which is not gaseous in state rather it is solid or liquid in state okay so how does that you know exchange happens if i talk about water water cannot move and out using diffusion okay the water move along the membrane via the concentration gradient and that process of modified diffusion is known as osmosis a simple thing of how osmosis work this is the concentration gradient okay if i talk in detail this is the line of the plasma membrane 
okay so supposingly there is little water inside the cell and there is high amount of water outside the cells so water from the outside will go inside the cell via the plasma membrane which is often considered as the concentration gradient and this process is known as osmosis now if i talk about osmosis osmosis occurs in three types or three condition okay the first very first thing what we can learn in the process of osmosis is the hypotonic solution there are three types of solution hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic so if i talk about hypotonic solution okay so in this case this supposing this is the outside of the cell and this is the cell so what will happen in a hypotonic solution is the concentration on the outside is less while the concentration in the inside is more what concentration concentration of solutes supposingly if i have sugar and water water is the solvent because it is liquid state and sugar is the solute because it is in solid state now if i add 1 teaspoon of sugar let me tell you this is a glass of water the same two glass of water here i add 1 teaspoon of sugar while here i add 5 teaspoon of sugar so in which solution will be the sugar concentration more of course where i added 5 teaspoon of sugar similarly the concentration in the cell is more than the concentration outside the cell then this creates a hypotonic solution outside the cell okay the hypotonic solution is created outside the cell and the water from outside goes inside the cell why see supposingly if i have to mix this both into 3 tablespoon each what will happen is the water from 1 tablespoon sugar has to be added into 5 tablespoon sugar water so that the balanced solution may become 3 tablespoon each but in this process this value will reduce wherein this value will increase similar thing happens with the cell this value the outside concentration is low therefore the water when moved into the cell the water is lost from here and there is a lot of accumulation of water in the cell and this leads to swelling of the cell now this swelling of the cell makes the cell swell up simple example whenever you have raisins in your house what you all do is if you all take few raisins in a container containing water of course the water from outside will move into the raisins inside and therefore the raisins will swell up the similar thing happens in this process so the after going on to the first thing that is hypotonic hypo means less and where is the concentration less outside okay we will come on to the second process which is known as isotonic now iso means equal okay if the concentration on both the side is equal in the cell as well as outside the cell then what will happen is there will be movement of water but each there will be movement of water but each solution will neither gain shape nor reduce shape so overall it the movement of water is said to be cancelled so the isotonic solution the environment and the cell is in equal proportion in terms of water now what happens in terms of hypertonic solution 
ओके सपोज एक दिस फाइव टेबल स्पून शुगर इज ओवर योर दैट इज आउटसाइड द सेल सो कॉन्सेंट्रेशन आउटसाइड द सेल इज हायर द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन साइड द सेल इज लोअर ओके सो इफ द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज हायर एंड इन द सेल इट्स लोअर द वॉटर फ्रॉम द सेल विल मूव आउट to the concentration of higher to the area of higher concentration that is outside the cell now what happens is while the water is move out the cell tries to shrink okay so these are the three types of solution in the process of osmosis which occurs via the plasma membrane so this is all the work or maybe the transportation work of the plasma membrane allow me to rub the board okay so after concentration what we have is the structure of the plasma membrane how is the plasma or what is the plasma membrane made up of now very simple thing the plasma membrane is made up of lipids and proteins now what are lipids lipids are fats so of course plasma membrane is made up of lipids and proteins now if there is a solid food particle how is the cell going to take in the solid food particle a simple answer for this is the movement of amoeba wherein it engulfs the food via a pseudopodia now that was known as phagocytosis but here the cell has selectively permeable plasma membrane by the word selectively permeable i mean to say that it allows only certain kinds of food particle to enter inside okay so this selectively permeable plasma membrane has certain canal like structure which helps in taking off physical food that is the solid food and this process of taking the solid food from outside into inside is known as endocytosis okay so this covers up your plasma membrane after plasma membrane we will move along to the cell wall now what is the cell wall okay first very first thing you all need to know is the plants have the cell wall the animals do not have cell wall now animals the outer layering is the plasma membrane but above the plasma membrane there is another outer layering in terms of plants and that outer layering is a rigid but at the same time dead what do i mean by dead it only provides mechanical support nothing else okay and this outer covering of the plasma membrane is known as the cell wall okay now the cell wall is present in plants and this cell wall is made up of a substance known as the cellulose okay so if i talk about cell wall and cellulose it may happen that now as just now what i explained it may happen that due to osmosis the cell enlarges or the cell shrinks but the cell wall does not enlarge neither do it shrink it remains in its own position so if there is a hypertonic solution outside the cell might shrink but the cell wall tends to share its shape or tends to retain its shape and this process is known as plasmolysis 
okay now here what happens is the cell wall in the plant cell is used for the rigidity because as you all know plants do not move from one place to another rather they have their whole life in a single position only the thing they do is grow in certain directions but they cannot but they cannot move so therefore cell wall is essential to hold the shape of the plants intact but we animals have different movements right from the movements of fingers to the limbs to the every other part of the body so if cell wall would have been present in us we it would have been very difficult to move therefore we do not have cell wall so now what happens is in the terms of osmosis if the cell shrinks the cell wall again retains shape okay so this process is known as plasmolysis supposingly if there is a hypotonic solution in which the cell swells up again the cell wall won't allow the cell to swell up because of its definitive structure so this is the help or this is the this is the functions of the cell wall so now we will move on to the something which is very important inside the cell let me rub this now we will move on something which is very interesting or very you know maybe the most important thing of the cell is the cell nucleus now if i talk about a cell nucleus like cell wall it has a bilayer okay and inside this what it has is a condensed condensed thread like thing which is known as chromosome or usually the chromosome is found when the cell is undergoing division if the cell is not undergoing division what usually is seen is the network of thread like structures known as the chromatids okay so chromatids is the network of thread like structure which is seen in the nucleus now if we talk more about nucleus now what does this chromatids contain okay this chromatids contain a large amount of dna okay so what is dna dna is deoxyribonucleic acid now this dna along with certain proteins made up the whole constitution of this chromosome or oh sorry of this nucleus but in that the dna which is functional are known as genes okay so anything what we acquire from our parents is stored inside the nucleus of is stored as the genes inside the nucleus of a cell okay so after coming on to this now why is nucleus important nucleus is important because it plays a major role in the cell division uh which is of course you all will learn it in the later stages and the another thing the nucleus has the hereditary information through which the cell grant access and provides proteins and various other factors okay so i talk about two kinds of nucleus which are present in the cell okay don't confuse this with unicellular and multicellular organism but again there are certain organisms which are you know very 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 primitive in nature and this organism have a prokaryotic cell
and whatever is very developed in nature has something known as eukaryotic cell okay now what does the pro means pro means before and you means now or after karyotic or the karyon means nucleus okay so if the cell is prokaryotic that means it has a primitive nucleus now if it has a primitive nucleus what do i mean by saying that is what you can see is only the threads known as the nucleotides or nucleoids but it does not have a nuclear membrane along with the nuclear membrane it does not have any other membrane all the cell organelles which are present inside which you will learn of course after this do not have a membrane there are only lysosomes and there is presence of thread like structure and therefore it is known as the prokaryotic cell now if i talk about the eukaryotic cell eukaryotic cell have a nucleus or maybe the nuclear membrane it has a membrane which all the organs of or the organelles of the pro eukaryotic cells are membrane bound that is every organ have their particular membrane so therefore prokaryotic cells differs from the eukaryotic cells and the main thing is in terms of nucleus so after coming from the nucleus we will come on something which is known as the cytoplasm now what is cytoplasm everything every fluid like structure which is present in the cell is known as the cytoplasm or or it is also known as the protoplasm okay so if i talk about cytoplasm and the protoplasm it is the fluid content in the whole cell now why is the fluid necessary now there are various activities going on in the cell and there are various organs which are going on in this cell, like which are organelles which are present in the cell which carry out certain activity there needs to be a membrane which is a cyto is sorry protoplasma membrane and there needs to be a organelle membrane which is the nuclear membrane now the transport of particles from one membrane to another is initiated or is mediated by the fluid known as the cytoplasm it is present in each and every cells now let us move on to something other than the cell membrane the nuclear membrane the nucleus the cytoplasm the cell wall which are known as the cell organelles okay if i talk about cell organelles there are various cell organelles present inside the cell which are you know maybe the endoplasmic reticulum maybe the golgi body or the golgi apparatus it may be lysosomes it may be mitochondria okay then it may happen then okay there are certain vacuoles there are plastids okay and so on and so forth so now we will take a brief look of all the cell organelles starting from the endoplasmic reticulum 
Now, what is the endoplasmic reticulum? Let me draw a simple diagram. Okay, the cell has a network which starts from the nucleus and ends up into the cytoplasm. Okay, this network is known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, again, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. One has a bead like structure and therefore it is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum one other one does not have any structure and therefore it is known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum now what happens in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and what happens in the smooth and why is it differentiated the main thing before before understanding what happens is that the endoplasmic reticulum or the rough endoplasmic reticulum have the presence of ribosomes while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have the presence of ribosomes okay now if i talk about this structures okay these are known as the tubules well there are small sac like structure known as the vesicle fine so this is how the endoplasmic reticulum looks now if i talk about the rough endoplasmic reticulum it usually the rough endoplasmic reticulum usually does the synthesis of protein okay so whatever protein what we see inside our body and what we observe is usually synthesized by the rough endoplasmic reticulum similarly smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesize fats or what we call as lipids okay now this fats and lipids are synthesized by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum but this both lipids and proteins helps to build up something which is known as the plasma membrane okay so this is how the rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps okay they produce proteins they store proteins in vesicles they produce fats they store fats okay now this fats or proteins now what are these fats they may be enzymes they may be hormones etc this all are produced by the endoplasmic reticulum now if i talk about endoplasmic reticulum why is it folded the very simple thing is to increase the surface area supposingly if i have a paper okay if i have this paper of say 20 centimeters if i fold this paper the area which it will occupy is now supposedly 6 centimeters okay but the surface area still remains 20 centimeter so this increases the concept of surface area thereby in smaller space it produces larger amount of proteins of fats whatever is needed okay so after moving let me before moving on let me tell you one thing the smooth endoplasmic reticulum often plays an important role what it r removes out all the toxins and the drugs which are present in the cells or in the body 
So after endoplasmic reticulum, we will move on something known as Golgi body. If I talk about Golgi apparatus, it is again something like endoplasmic reticulum. But the only difference is it is not attached to the nuclear membrane. Neither it is neither it is attached to the si a pair, plasma membrane. It is there inside the cell, independent and similar to that of endoplasmic reticulum. It also has vesicles. Okay, it. Okay, now the sac-like structure here were known as the tubules. Now the sac-like structure here are known as the cisternae. Okay, now what does this Golgi body do? When the protein or the fat that has been, you know, produced by the endoplasmic reticulum, it is transferred via the vesicles to the Golgi body. Now, this Golgi body somewhat modifies, modifies the protein and the fat and stores them. Supposedly, there is a raw material. There is an industry which cuts and polishes the wood and bring on to a second industry which produce a table out of that wood. Similarly, the first industry is the endoplasmic reticulum and the second industry is the Golgi body. Okay. Now, another thing what Golgi body does is it breaks down complex sugars into simple sugars. Okay. So, this is again the function of the Golgi body. Now, uh, interesting fact that this Golgi bodies were named after a scientist named as Camilo Golgi. Okay, so now these vesicles okay may contain useful materials. These vesicles may contain toxic material, and if this vesicle contain toxic material, then that is known as the lysosomes. Now, what are lysosomes? A simple thing similar to what you have a dustbin in your house the cell is the house and its dustbin is the lysosome all the waste materials which has been you know collected by various organelles of the cell is then present in the lysosomes now what else is present in the lysosomes Along with the waste material, lysosome present various enzymes. Okay, now what are enzymes? Enzymes are biocatalysts which help in degradation of the material. Now this have powerful enzyme which digest all the waste materials which is produced and in a very good you know manner it just evacuates out of the cell but if there is a large amount of waste material in the cell then these lysosomes opens up burst up if they burst up what will happen is the digestive enzyme present in them will burst up and therefore the whole cell as such gets degenerated therefore lysosomes are also known as the suicide bags of the cell since the nucleus is the main lysosomes are the suicide bag and one thing very important what we will learn is mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell of course we will go into that detail but lysosomes are known as the suicide bags of the cell after lysosomes let us come on to something which is known as the mitochondria okay Now, similar to what the electricity connection what we have in the house, the mitochondria is similar to that of the cell. Why? Because mitochondria generates energy for the cell and therefore it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Okay. 
So if I talk about mitochondria, it is the powerhouse. And how does it generates energy? It generates energy via a simple procedure or simple thing known as the ATP. Now ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, similar to what we have currency like 500, 1000, etc. Similarly, the ATP is the currency of mitochondria to generate energy. Okay, so if I talk about mitochondria in detail, its structure is quite unique. Why? Because it has two membranes. This is the outer membrane which is smooth. This is the inner membrane which is folded. Why it is folded? For the very same reason as that of the endoplasmic reticulum to increase the surface area for the production of energy. Now if I talk about outer membrane, the outer membrane is porous that means it will allow anything and everything to come inside the cells. It has pores while the inner membrane is not porous. It is very selectively permeable. That means it does not allow everything to come inside the inner membrane. Now, if I talk about mitochondria, two interesting fact is it has its own DNA and own ribosomes. Why are these two used? DNA is the material and another interesting things in a whole body there are pairs 23 pairs of chromosome wherein one pair is received from your father one pair is received from your mother but the mitochondrial DNA or the mitochondrial or the whole of the mitochondria is received from your mother. Therefore, there are certain traits which you have like your mother rather than your father. That is because of this. Okay. So if I talk about mitochondria, it's that's it for mitochondria. We will talk about something known as plastids. Okay. Okay, plastids. Now, if I talk about plastids. Plast means storage. Okay, anything which stores food are known as plastids. Now again, these plastids are of two types. Okay, one is the chromoplast. The other one is the leucoplast. Okay, now this chromoplast. Okay, means chromo means color. Leucoplast means colorless or white. Now this chromoplast, what it does is, it stores pigments, color pigments inside it. So if I talk about a color pigment, okay, let me draw a plastid here. Plastid is somewhat like this, with lots of color pigments. Okay, I was able to draw four, but then there are more of them. Okay, so leucoplast stores fats and lipids. This has pigmented factors which it stores. So pigmented and the sense in plants. Okay, it has chloroplast, chromoplast. Now the chloroplast. is a green color pigment containing plastid which is there in leaves which helps in the synthesizing of photosynthesis or the, or the process of photosynthesis. Now again the whole thing inside is known as the stroma okay and there are granules or sac like thing or the pigments which is present in the plastids like the mitochondria it also has its own dna and ribosomes but since plastids are not present in animals they are present only in plants okay so 
we do not have plastids but we have our own dna and ribosomes in the mitochondria so after plastids the last thing where we can come on is the vacuoles okay now vacuoles are tiny to large food storing organelles okay in pla animal cell it is tiny okay but in plant cells it is a large vacuole uh, so if i talk about vacuoles it is generally a storage thing it can store air it can store water it can store food it can store anything but in plants it is more turgid in animals if i take a look of animal cells the nucleus is in pres in middle but if i take a look of plant cell the nucleus is in the periphery why because 80 to 70% of the plant cell is occupied by plastids why is it so it is to maintain the turgidity of the cell again i explained to you all that the animal cells can be flexible but the plant cells remain to stay still so to maintain the inner turgidity plastids are present in a large quantity they may contain fat glucose amino acids sugars okay and very such things so this together this all together concludes your chapter of the fundamental unit of life that is the cell hope you all understand any doubts regarding this will be accepted when we come to the classrooms after this covid-19 situation thank you